Well, it's 11 o'clock. Um, that puts me back at base camp at around 12.30 to 1. It's pretty good timing. Um, it's kind of an epic... I don't know what you call it, landmark, whatever you want to call it for me. Time. I don't even know if those two words are right. I'm not a poet, and I know it, so ah, I did get you there. But this was my spike camp, where my bow is. So I've been sleeping in my bivy. And uh, I really only have two sets of clothes up here. <laughs> I know I sound like I'm preaching a whole lot on the clothing thing, but I really hope everybody gets to experience what I've had to experience the last 30 days to pick out one bowl in an entire ginormous area that seems to swallow you whole, let alone all the elk in it, and uh, go after him and have a plan, find him, and in theory ruin him. <laughs> It's not about the kill. It's about the chase. It is for me. It always has been for me. And everything that I do wasn't about an Olympic gold medal. It was about the chase to the end of the road to win that gold medal. This bull's up here somewhere. I have one chance left at him in a drainage down over here that has other elk in it. I think I heard a bull that was with him. I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty certain. And if my newfound friend is right and he saw the bull, which would make sense that I did put an arrow in, hopefully I'll get to talk to him when I get down to base camp. Uh, if he's not out trying to find one on his own, visibility is about zero. So for a rifle guy, I'm not sure if he's going to head up into the mountains. We are up in the mountains, but if he's going to climb up from the 8,000 feet up to the 10,000 foot mark, that would be kind of silly to me, but, you know, kind of comes and goes. Um, some of the snow is melting a little bit. If I can find my bull in that drainage, I will find my bull. I've got a full day tomorrow to look for him. i got a half a day today. So, by 3 or 4 o'clock, I'll load up my, uh, I'll have everything all laid out inside my super tent and everything else taken care of that I can take care of. I had a <clears throat> good friend, actually two good friends, send me weather reports. So since I can't get onto the internet up here, unless I'm actually up way up high, you have to kind of rely on some people sometimes when you can. A lot of these hunts, I don't have any service, so I'm thankful for what I do have. And uh, I don't know, I guess I'll just space these out as I get back, so you can kind of feel like it felt like to be on the journey with me, try to launch them about the same time, I'll just be a couple days behind. Who knows, at the end of these you might see me with a bull, <laughs> or you might not. Either way, I found what I was looking for in the mountain, and as I said in a post before, to come home with anything less is a failure. I've given it my all, I've busted my tail, I've prepared. I've sold things to get gear that I knew I could survive with, and I'm okay with all that. I wish I could take that arrow back, <laughs> but I honestly couldn't tell you what I would do different. That bull should be dead, dadgummit. But if he's gone as far as my newfound friend says he's gone, I don't know what occurred, but something occurred that... Only a video camera could have told. Retrospectively, the only thing I can think of that I could have maybe done was possibly try to set up the phone, especially since it was a live feed, and rig it somehow. But although I had intentions of doing that, when I got to the top, if you watched the first video when I was moving in to set up, antlers were just on the horizon, and uh, there was no time. So I did the best I could. That's all a guy can ask for, and it's uh, it's sombering. So, <laughs> not to make all these these past couple posts sound kind of crappy. I did have a good time on the mountain last night. Whenever it started hailing, being in the clouds with hail coming down, that's something special. 
Some people call it stupid. I call it living. Back to base camp.